What's up, everybody? Welcome back to part two of oh, this climax. Is Bernadette Cooper and George Fender Rella Irby upload? Before I go any further, I just want to say welcome, you new viewers, you returning viewers, and you subscribers. Thank you. Thank you sincerely from the bottom of my heart for tuning in over here. I really and truly appreciate you. So you new viewers and returning viewers, go ahead on and become subscribers. Hit that subscribe button and all of you go ahead on and hit the like button as well as leave a comment. We're talking about R&B divas over here. OK, it doesn't get any better than this. And you already know that I left. <laughs> The last video because I was like, this is tough and it's still tough. All right. So we're just going to sit back, relax, and we're just going to enjoy these two ladies. Okay. And their work. We're going gonna, gonna to be at ease. I promise you. Like, as I said, I never really have like anything that I've written down when it comes to covering the artists I cover. I like them enough that I could just sit here in front of the camera and I could just talk about them, you know, and feel like I am having a discussion with you all or with friends of mine. Like this is a conversation that I would have with, you know, friends of mine and they'll go like, okay, we just like the music, <laughs> but I would do this. So I feel so good about it. Like, oh, wow. So thank you. Thank you, Bernadette Cooper. And thank you, Joyce Fenderella Irby and all of the ladies of Climax, all of you. I understand that you might have some riffs going on within the count. However, I thank you for being a part of the soundtrack of my life. And you guys should know over here by now, if you are tuning in often, then you already know that my motto is put your behind where your heart desires to be. And these ladies obviously did that. So thank you so much. I'm doing that. I encourage you to do that as well. So I ended the last video describing Bernadette's production style, trying to explain it myself. And then I come up with Missy Elliott. And I'm here to tell you that, yes, it is similar. I'm not saying that Missy Elliott bit off Bernadette Cooper's style. I'm not saying that at all. But I am saying in this that we would like to think that what Missy Elliott and Timberland did when they first came up was something new, and it wasn't like Bernadette was doing that. That's all I'm saying. That's it. So let's talk. Okay, shall we? Let's get it together. So I told you that Climax is an all-girl band. There's a lot of girl power in this group. You have Lynn Malsby, who, you know, has written a, a, a big pop hit for this group. Uh, you have uh, Babyface uh, producing. Eventually, you have, um, I think Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis did some things with them, but I don't think it made much traction. But it was enough for Bernadette and the ladies to learn what they needed to learn and find their way. And this is when we get the Bernadette slap me, I'm not in the mood, <laughs> okay, style. And also, too, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis were... Uh, or are affiliated with the time, which would be Morris Day in the time. And I never thought about it until now, how similar Bernadette Cooper's persona and Morris Day's persona was pretty much kind of the same. I never thought about it. And these two tied together, if you think about it, like everything is kind of close knit as far as Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis being a, uh, having worked with both groups, so on and so forth. So I can see how that probably came about. However, I don't know if that was the case, how Bernadette came into her, uh, what I want to call it, let's just call it her persona or her alter ego. By the way, 
I'm curious, does it have a name? Does her alter ego have a name? Like, who does she become? Who is she? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a good question to ask, Bernadette. Hmm. Like, what is that? See, it just flows. We just have a conversation. Like, I just think out of the air and it comes. Hmm. I wonder what it's called. But anyway, so Bernadette and the ladies, they find their way. Okay. Now, we know that Bernadette is a drummer. Joyce Fenderella Irby, she is the guitarist. Okay. And both of these ladies are producers, okay? Now, let's talk about their work together. Like, we could easily, and here's another thing I don't do, and I'm glad I'm bringing this up. I introduce them. It's up to you to go and figure out who they are. Look through their catalog. Like, go and, and go back to that very first record that they put out and then listen to everything. You know, that's what I'm saying. Learn who, who they are. That's what I encourage you guys to do. If you're clicking on over here to try to get out like she was born in 19, blah, blah, blah. And it was the reason why and she is what? No, I don't do that. I, I'm not trying to sit back here and that, that, no, no. <laughs> it's like, that's not what I do. <laughs> like, no, boy, 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 boy. <laughs> So, <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. So you have Lynn Malsby, okay, who is writing and producing. You have um, the other ladies, or you have Joyce Fenderella Irby. Like she is, is, is producing. You probably don't see many people. Um, what do I want to call it? Uh, writing. Like on the record. So it seems like what, what is happening within this group, Climax, is that you seeing them pretty much, if they're not writing, they're probably producing. If they're not producing, they're probably writing. So it seems like it just kind of flows back and forth. Like, you know, you're gonna you're doing one or the other within Climax. That's what it looks like. So now I want to assume that Bernadette left on her own. I do. I know we watched the Climax Unsung, and I don't know. It was that, what was the name of that? Bands Reunited. That's what it was. I remember that. Bands Reunited. Like, that was an epic episode for them. Like, I was looking like, is what? Is this what's happening? And then... <laughs> When the guy comes in and asks him about getting back together again, it was Lynn. I, I told you, I remember this like yesterday. Lynn was like, what, what do you want to know? I think Lynn says, where's my money? <laughs> that was the first thing that comes out of Lynn's mouth. As it relates to, is it Cheryl Cooley? You know what? <laughs> See, y'all making me dish. I don't want to do it. Oh, gosh, why they making me do it? I don't want to dish out the dirt on who drop kick who in these entertainment streets. I just don't want to do it. <laughs> oh, but y'all pulling me in. <sighs> there is a name I can't remember that Joyce Irby calls Cooley. She calls her something. I can't remember that name she calls her. <laughs> but anyway, she calls her a name. <laughs> uh not so much derogatory, but it's not a good name. Like, it's nothing mean and vicious, but it's not nice either. You know, she 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 doesn't mean it to be nice because Sher Cooling, she it was trying to take the band's name or has been trying to take the band name or whatever the case may be going on in this climax story. OK, we're going to put that to the side right now. So Bernadette leaves. I don't know if she leaves on her own. It could be at the time that maybe Bernadette is like, hey, you know, I'm I'm in the group. I'm, I'm popular, you know, like I'm I'm really, I'm, I'm two albums in. We're doing good, so on and so forth. forth I'm out. Like, I'm going to go in and produce more of this than the other. Okay. So she does that. Now, <sighs> 
time, Bernadette goes over to MCA Records. I remember this. She goes over to MCA Records. I pronounced the gentleman's name uh, incorrectly, but he's an executive over there at this moment in time. I think he started out as a DJ or, or, or doing remixes or something like that. And I think his name is, I pronounced it wrong, so I apologize. He is no longer with us. However, I think it's Luel or Luel Silas Jr. Okay. Uh, very much hands on over there at MCA Records. He's an executive over there. By the way, as I said before, you know, you're going to get a lot of Angela Wimbush over here. So if you are not a fan of Angela Wimbush's, you're going to become one <laughs> over here. OK, I'm just letting you know what it is. So Angela Wimbush, by the way, has a production deal around 1990 with both Atlantic Records and MCA Records. OK. So how am I tying that together? I'm just telling you what kind of guy Lou L. Silas Jr. is. Like he is, you know, he's doing a whole lot of things over there with MCA Records with Stephanie Mills and Pat LaBelle and so on and so forth. There's other artists over there at MCA Records. And, and it seems like everything is taking off is what I'm saying. Like these, these artists over there, I think today is over there at MCA Records. I think there was a group by the name of Stacy and Chemico. Him, or, or Kamiko, the song was called Wait For Me. I remember them being over there. Just look, okay, this is how I'm going to show you what it was like. I picture it this way. Thank you for that. It was kind of like Puff Daddy or Sean P. Diddy Combs or Sean Combs in like the early 90s, like from 1992, when he when he introduces Mary J. Blige, and this is MCA Records, uh, Uptown MCA Records, uh, uh, Andre Harrell, think about it. And those artists, you see how he has this little, small little camp, and when I mean small camp, like he has this group of artists, right? And they're pretty much about to really make a name for themselves. Louis Salas Jr. to me has that going on. You know, uh, and he, it looks like he's trying to make it pop. MCA Records is releasing a lot of material around, uh, let's just say, 88, 89, 90. Okay. And I think Luel Salas Jr. leaves. He leaves MCA Records somewhere between 1990. I could be wrong about those days it's because it's not music, so to speak. But I know around probably... 1990 to 1992, Lou L. Salas Jr. is leaving MCA Records. And I think he's going to start his own record company called Salas Records. Shante Moore, he's the gentleman who's responsible for bringing Shante Moore out. I'm not going to say discovering her. You know how we get with this discovering stuff. People say, well, yeah, but he he didn't really discover her, so on and so forth. And if you've really been following music, music, like this time of day of music, then you will already know that Brian Alexander Morgan said he wrote Weak by um, SWV because he had a crush. He was really crushing on, you know, Shante Moore. Another story. So I'm just trying to let you know about who discovered who. I kind of like don't want to get involved in that. But just say Salas Records is who brought Shante Moore out to the forefront. He leaves. Now, when he leaves, it looks like MCA Records is definitely going through a change. Okay. Like the artists that I just mentioned to you and look for those artists yourself, and you'll soon see that those artists are gone. Okay. They are. As a matter of fact, Angela Winbush, as I told you, uh, she has a production company, uh, a production deal with MCA Records, right? She is producing Stephanie Mills. She produced a group by the name of Body over at MCA Records. Um, I think she produced another guy over there around by 1991. I think his name, I say his name wrong because it's kind of spelled different. It looks like it could be George Pettis, all right? I think they produce. Uh, some things for him. I think that she ends up producing some a song for this guy by the name of London Jones. I think he was affiliated with uh, Louis Salas Jr. as well. So anyway, where I'm going with all this is some things are happening. How does this 
tie into Bernadette Cooper because Bernadette Cooper has left Climax and she is pursuing a solo record. I'm not quite sure. Things can kind of be a little hazy. You know, I'm never missing. Sometimes I hit the bullseye and sometimes I go like, like that, but I'm there, but it's a tight, it's a slight miss. I'm thinking that he leaves and he leaves in the middle of Bernadette's um, album. Sorry about that. He leaves in the middle of Bernadette's album. Now, you know how record companies are. Record companies and these executives, when they get somebody new coming in, one executive could really and truly be pouring in so much love and attention to you and your project, and they're guiding it. They know exactly how they want it to sound. They know exactly how they're going to promote it when it comes out. Like they just know, they know, they know, they know. And then when the executive leaves, then you're like, whoa, like what's going on with my project now? Rewind it back to Angela Wimbush. That's one of the reasons why Angela Wimbush left uh, Polygram Records. She left Polygram Records for the same reason around 1990, 1991. From my understanding, she leaves because the executives, she says it. I think I, rem I can remember the quote, how she said it. I think she said, the people who had power left. She, I can't remember who those people were, but the people who had power left. So she felt like, why should I still be there? And these are the people, and I'm here to tell you when I, I'm, I'm just giving you an example. Say what you want to say about Angela Wimbush as far as record sales are concerned. It's, it's just what it is. Say, you know, her own individual record sales, even though she has had, you know, several top 20 R&B hits, top 10 R&B hits, number one hits, so on and so forth, you know, uh, and what have you. Polygram Records, at the end of the day, did their darkness. OK, to promote Angela, they definitely tried to cross that lady over. I don't know why it didn't happen, but I'm here to tell you they tried. <laughs> OK, they did. OK, I just felt like at the time, this is just my personal opinion. I don't think she had the right management. The lady loves Ron Isley. That's just what it is. You know, great, wonderful partnership, even though they're no longer married. You know, uh, uh, still great friendship, you know, they have performed on the same stage together, you know, shows together. Since they're divorced, this, then the other, blah, blah, blah. It is what it is. But I'm just saying my opinion is that I don't think Ron Osley, at the end of the day, was capable of helping the record companies cross her over, is where I'm getting to. Did some incredible uh, deals together. You know what I'm saying? Like the lady was on her ish as far as, you know, her publishing deals and her production deals and all of that stuff and putting out her albums. And he pretty much made sure that all of that happened, but that crossover never happened. I'll give you a prime example. I thought that Angela Wimbush was supposed to work with Shaka Khan. I, I don't know what happened to that project. Do you see what I'm saying? Give you another prime example. I'm just on my little sidebar. I'm going to come back around. With artists such as Petta the Bell and Gladys Knight over at MCA Records, and she had production deals, it just seemed like only right for her to work with Petta the Bell and Gladys Knight, and it didn't. And I think Petta the Bell and Gladys Knight was a different caliber of artists, you know? And so it's just what it is. So what I'm trying to get you guys to understand is, is that Record these executives do have an idea of how they see your career. So when they leave and go to other record companies, your project cannot get the attention that it needed. And the, that's the reason why Angela left. So now Bernadette Cooper, her album is either done or it's being wrapped up. One of the case may be whatever is going on, she's definitely in limbo. OK, with her album. And then by the time it comes out, it's kind of like. Huh? Like, what is it? I love I looked good. I mean, it was definitely the uh, Bernadette's album drama, according to Bernadette, is definitely 
Bernadette's personality. My favorite song on the album is actually a song called Stupid. The song is stupid. That's how good it is to me. So that's what happened. I think, I could be wrong. I think it was kind of pushed back, pushed up, pushed to the side. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it just never got the attention it needed as far as a release date. And I think once they thought about releasing it, then it was kind of like, no, nah, we're going to push it back, so on and so forth. And so she felt in that crack, if I'm not mistaken. So that's what happened to Bernadette record, okay? Now, I think we had a good place to stop because, oh, God, this is getting good. This is almost like my involved story. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, you know me. I told you I'm not trying to stay long. You know, I'm trying to keep it in the 30-minute range. So how can I wrap this up for Bernadette's album? Great album. Definitely right on time. And it just fell through. Now, let's talk about Joyce Fenderella Irby. I think I got enough time to wrap this one up. It seems like now, now Joyce said this out of her own mouth. I'm sorry. Joy said this out of her own mouth. You know, I'm under the impression that Joyce left. Joyce is saying, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I don't understand how they got up there. Y'all, I apologize. I don't know what that was. This is what's supposed to be up there. We're going to dish out the dirt on who dropped kick who in these entertainment streets. Now, Joyce is saying, like, like, Bernadette probably left. <laughs> Joyce is saying, I was kicked out. That's why I can't wait to get this book. It's a book. <laughs> she has a book. Joyce Fenderella Irby has a book out. It's called I Still Say Yes. Now, I Still Say Yes is another song uh, that she sings lead on Wonderful Ballad. Produced by Babyface, if I'm not mistaken, or it could have been written by Babyface. Wait a minute. I think, you know what? I think, no, it was probably written by Babyface, but something tells me Babyface didn't produce it, though. Hmm. I don't know why I'm getting that. I think it was probably written by Babyface. Babyface didn't produce it. Something's telling me Joyce has some production in that. But anyway, right now I can hear Howard Hughes' voice coming in at the end of that song. But anyway, so let's just say she was kicked out the group. I'm going to find out why. And she gets a production deal. Well, well, let's just say she gets a, a, a record deal with Motown. Wasn't it Motown? It was Motown, wasn't it? And I'm just saying, you know, unlike what happened with Bernadette's album, as far as releasing some good, strong singles, Joyce got that. And I think that's on Mr. DJ. Mr. DJ had to, I don't know if it went to number one, but it was definitely a top five. Definitely a top 10. She got some, she got some charts. Like she, she, she got in. Like she got in, and I think this is when Dallas, Dallas Austin shows up. Let's see, y'all be trying to get me. I'm trying to save it. <laughs> I'm, just trying, I'm trying to pull me in. I feel I'm trying to, you know, Dallas. You mm, just by what I just, just by my. Mm, I got to put that allegedly up there because I just mm, my mm, alone is like. That's mm, we gonna talk. See, we I'm going somewhere. So so unlike Bernadette, she gets the hits. She gets into that R&B top twenty and all that stuff 
Irby over here. But my opinion, <laughs> I don't know what, and I still keep trying to see, I have an opinion about it. And my opinion is, is that, and I'm going to end it this way on this video, because we are definitely about to approach the 30 minute mark. But my opinion about this is, and we'll talk about it in the next video. They wasn't part of the boys club. These two ladies. I, I hate to say it that way. That's to me what it looks like. Something tells me these two ladies, and I could be wrong, are very, very independent women. You know what I mean? Like, 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 I don't know who their management work was, if they, you know, who was managing them at the time, but whoever managed their careers, think about it. Like, she is helping people. Joyce is helping people get deals. I'm sure she should have some management. But who, and I'm going to read the book because I have a question. Who was there to help her in the midst of this foolishness that was going on? Oh, well, it's giving me a headache because I want to say something so bad. Wait to the book. Wait to the book. And I think the same thing happened with Bernadette. Who was her management? Like, why didn't we get another Bernadette album right after that? That's what I want to talk about. We'll, 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 we'll pick up from their albums and all of that stuff in the next video. But I'm just trying to get you guys to just kind of see where I'm, I'm going with this. To me, they were in the boys club. And... Maybe Missy had the respect she had because Timberland is there. You see what I'm saying? And you know that saying that behind every great man, there's a great woman. But what about the music industry? Is it behind every great woman, there's a great man? You know, some female rappers talk about that, right? Like, you know, we got to, we got to have, we got to be, you know, in the clique. You know, we got to have the boys, you know? And Climax is a self-contained, it's a self-contained band. It has gotten to that point. It's a self-contained band, and we have these females in this uh, uh, self-contained band. And then you got to deal with them becoming successful individually. So you just got that. Forget it. Take, take sex out of it, like their gender. Take that out of it. Just success alone can cause people to have riffs. And then you have these females in this band, and they're going solo. They're going to separate ways. And where, where are the guys? Because at the end of the day, that's kind of like what it looks like. And to me, it looks like maybe in Joyce's case, and I could be wrong, I'm get the book. Look like the guys tried to exclude her. And maybe she was just too much for her own good. She, 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 yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm saying that's just an opinion. But anyway, let's wrap it up. We're about to reach the 30 minute point. So thank you for tuning in over here at Pepe Live View. I appreciate it. You know, over here, we believe that you need to put your behind where your heart desires to be. And also remember, whenever I leave my mother's presence, she always tells me, she says, baby, remember, I love you, but God loves you best. And on that note, I am looking forward to seeing you next video. I definitely am. Until then. You all take care of yourselves out there. <laughs>